Hey there folks, uh, my name is Ben and I still have not cleaned up from the Undertale custom review. It's all, it's all still there. But uh, anyways, this video is actually not about Undertale, even though I guess it kind of is, but this video is about Deltarune. This is my Deltarune custom review. Um, I mean, really, it and Undertale custom reviews were not really going to uh, be put out right next to each other. That was just kind of a coincidence. I was trying to do this one way earlier in the Undertale one. This one was supposed to come out early last year. So there's like half of these figures are kind of older. Um, and then, or not, not that much older, just from like July of last year. These figures were supposed to come out like in the summer. Um, but I just needed to order some pieces and I'm not good at doing that. So I ended up not even ordering them until very, very late in the year. But I ordered them and now I have all these figures and I didn't realize that was turned on so I'm going to turn it off. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these are going to be all the figures I make for Deltarune. Um, I'm considering already going back and making some more. But this is probably going to be it. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to start start the video. So the first figure is of course the main character of this series and that would be Chris, and also sorry if the video is a little darker, I'm recording this later than I uh, usually do, but yeah, the first figure up here is Chris, and I am really proud of this guy. He is the latest figure, which is ironic, because I think these mostly go in the order of, the opposite order of when I made them, uh, but yeah, he uses the Cole Lego Ninjago movie hair, which is the same hair I used for him in the minifigure series, and I was inspired. It's like, sometimes when I make customs, those customs inspire the minifigure series, and some minifigure series inspire the customs, like, for example, my Gaster from the last series was inspired by the Gaster that's going to be in Undertale Series 2. He's going to be in there. People keep asking me. He's going to be in Series 2, I promise. Um, and this figure was definitely inspired by my uh, Undertale minifigure series 1, and you can watch those at the top there. Um, but yeah, he uses the coal hair and then the face. I decided to paint uh, the shading on over his eyes and then just the mouth. Very, very, one of my most uh, simple faces. Um, the detail over his arm. Uh, this is something I've been doing a lot more uh, with my avatar figures, especially, that I will be reviewing uh, soon. And basically, this is actually a paper piece. Um, that is much like a Lego uh, cape piece in that it actually folds over his shoulder so you put like one piece there and one piece there which is really nice because I mean uh, it, it looks cool and it's more functional it's like a real Lego piece it does have kind of a hole in there but usually you don't see him from that side um, but yeah I was going to make this pink but I decided to make it more like the game, which is uh, dark red with a bluish outline. The sword um, is made out of, the top part here is made out of a gold and red combination to make a rose gold. And the bottom was a dark red and a silver uh, combination. I think that looks really good. I love the Undertale, not Undertale, but Deltarune color schemes, how they kind of all fit a color palette. And so that was really fun to make with this figure this shoulder pad is sculpted I think I may have already said that and this is one of the few figures that actually has detailing on the back so he actually looks pretty good from the back which I'm not good at you guys should know that and then for uh, the body and boots the body is literally just silver and I painted some uh, lines on it and then the same thing with the boots it's just silver with a little silvery blue line on it and then everything else is just dark blue and yeah, I'm starting to think maybe I should have given him mid legs to make him a. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I'm a little bit on the sick side, but not really. So sorry if that shows in the video. Um, but I was inspired by the Undertale. I mean, not Undertale, dang it. Uh, Deltarune vinyl record uh, for his boots, uh, for the lines on theirs. Uh, and yep, that's it for Chris. The second to last figure I made, and the second figure, of course, is Susie. And really, this whole video was delayed because of her, because I really wanted to use this hairpiece, the Kamala Khan or She-Hulk or whatever you want to call it, hairpiece. And so I took that and then uh, sculpted onto it just a couple of hairs to make it cover one eye. 
And just so I can get rid of it, her axe here is made out of... I don't know what this piece is. I think what it was used to was whenever you got a Lego set with a bunch of train tracks in it, they put this piece in there to stick them all together. And I've been looking for a use for it, and so I decided to sculpt onto it to make Susie's axe, which is just green stuff and I painted that part silver and that part of silvery blue um, but there's a lot of sculpting on her arms and hands because uh, I wanted to make her little spike uh, things 3D which I think turned out looking pretty good so this part up here is sculpted I sculpted the band and then sculpted the little spikies on it and then this bottom part here is if I can find an example uh, it's just like the minifigure stuff, like the head of a minifigure or something. So it could have been that, or it could have been the head of a bald guy. And I just cut that off and sculpted the yellow parts onto that and put it over the hand. It's something I think I learned uh, from Mr. Fuzzy Lego. I think he was the first person I saw do that, but I've been using it a lot uh, recently. Um, and then her torso, I usually sand them, but I didn't for this figure just because you can't really see it because I made this awesome paper jacket out of uh, just some paper and I painted it black and it just uh, goes over the arms like most of my jackets and then uh, her torso has the, uh, the heart on it on the belt and then just the black boots with the uh, yellow line and yeah I feel like I kind of made the arms a little beefy if I was to do this again I would probably make this part a little smaller uh, but, I mean, she is kind of a beefy girl <laughs> uh, in the game. But uh, another thing is I kind of feel like I messed up the skin color. Maybe should have made it a little more purple. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I'm criticizing myself so much on this figure. I really like it. I really do. I just uh, kind of wish I made it a purple color. Uh, but, yeah, that's it for Susie. The next figure is Rouse, but weirdly enough, as soon as I finished recording that figure, and I'm glad when I did, one of the spikes fell off her arm, so uh, that's good to know. But Rouse here was the first minifigure I made for these, and I think he's still uh, one of the best. I'm very proud of him. So he uses just the normal Gandalf hat, which I sculpted uh, the two little horns onto, and then he just has a minifigure head, which has ears sculpted onto it I believe or they may be sculpted onto the hat I don't know uh, nope they are sculpted onto the head there and then I just painted where his nose is and his eyes and gave him the silver glasses took a couple tries with those glasses but I'm really happy with how they turned out and again with this figure I really wanted to make it look like how the sprite looks so um, to do that I did not give him any arms and also um, I did not give him a mouth, uh, because that really fits the sprite better. And then I sculpted his little scarf here and then used E-tape for the bottom part of it and just painted it a little pink. And he has a little, uh, black heart on there, uh, so yeah, I was pretty happy with that. That came out. Then he just uses short legs, which I put some E-tape over to be like the continuation of his... Uh, shirt here and then under it they're just black legs that I just put some white lines on to be goat toes I, uh, I usually do that with my goat figures uh, none of the rest of them are over here right now uh, but yeah I mean compared to the other two he's very very simple but I still think he's one of the best I think he looks very very good uh, but uh, yeah that's it for Alze Next figure up is Lancer, who was incredibly, or not incredibly, but very much inspired by my kindergarten Scott Lang, Scott Lang figure in that I took some, uh, I made his hat removable by taking some tin foil and putting it inside of there and then just sculpting on top of that. Uh, but yeah, and I want to do that for a very specific reason I will show in a sec here. But yeah, Lancer, he is... A very simple figure he just has normal white arms and then a uh, blue hat and hands and boots which I just painted all with a very simple blue color and then just black on the torso with the blue uh, with his little blue uh, symbol there so uh, yeah he is he's very very simple like really I think these figures are kind of getting more simple as I go along 
Um, but yeah, he does have a very special surprise, and also he has no accessory, which I kind of regret doing, but I couldn't really think of one. And that is, he actually has a double-sided face. I don't do this very often, but I really didn't want to miss this opportunity to uh, give him this face from the game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's just no way I couldn't do this, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out, translating it into Lego, and also just the contrast between that face and this very, very simple face, I think is pretty, pretty, uh, hilarious. Uh, and that is it for Lancer already, I guess, wow. Another one of the first figures I made was Jevil, who as soon as I uh, found him in the game and knew he was in the game, I knew I had to make a figure of. I was going to give him the normal Jester hat, but I was kind of out at the moment, so I took this like green goblin hat, I guess, and sanded it up a bit on the top and a lot on the back, and then sculpted his little uh, jangly hat thingies, I don't know what it's called. Uh, and then gave him a very uh, toothy grin. I feel like the face looks a little happy, uh, and he kind of looks just like a little kid because of the short legs, but I kind of felt like that was uh, the, uh, the best way to portray him. Um, his scythe here, I just kind of built out of bricks. I didn't paint it any, um, but yeah, I think it, I think it looks, looks pretty accurate. It's not the best. I was going to paint one, but I kind of just didn't, I guess. I forgot to. Um, but yeah, I think this looks pretty good as an alternative. Um, he uses the, uh, I guess, the sad clown or William Shakespeare little uh, neck thingy. I don't know what the term for that is. And then I use an E-tape jacket, uh, similar to what I did with Susie. But instead, I put E-tape over the paper to make it look more, uh, I guess, glossy. And then his tail is sculpted. Uh, it fell off, so I just had to glue it back on a bit ago, so it still has some white glue there. Um, but, uh, yeah, the arms I just left plain because I felt like it really fit with the glossy torso um, for them to be glossy as well. And then the legs are just short legs that I painted the uh, the yellow shoes and everything and yeah that's it for for him too yeah thank you so much for watching this video I don't know why something felt weird about this one probably just because I never reviewed kind of this number of figures before I always review either they're like two figures or like a million <laughs> figures at a time uh, but thank you for watching this video uh, there's probably going to be another Undertale video soon I'm working on Undertale uh, minifigure series 2 uh, people think I keep getting comments on the first one that I need to make a series 2 or where does this character or where is this character but if you look in the comments I actually say I'm going to make that character in series 2 which is already uh, not drawn out on the computer which is it's already drawn out in my notebook and I have all the character picks and I'm usually not this mean in my outros. I'm sorry, don't run away. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, stick around if you want to see that. And just have a have a great day. Have a very good day. Stay nerdy.